Hello everybody and welcome to TechLore. Today I wanted to cover Graphene OS camera quality. Does it suck? So Graphene OS, for those of you who don't know, is a custom Android ROM offering the utmost security to the user while stripping all Google services and offering user privacy. It's considered one of, if not the best option for those of you who value your security and privacy. One of the issues and concerns I've heard people bring up is the camera quality. Believe it or not, Google implements a lot of software-based optimizations within their camera application that supposedly makes photos much nicer. We know that post-processing nowadays is almost equally important as the actual quality of the camera itself. This is more technically known as computational photography. Engadget did a phenomenal video covering this. The concern with flashing something like Graphene OS that doesn't support the Google Camera app officially, as well as no Google services, is you may be missing the software piece of your photos. So let's put this all to the test. In terms of hardware, I'll be using the Google Pixel 3a XL, which is a very highly rated camera. I'm gonna be showing you images side by side. One is from the Google Camera app, and the other one is from Open Camera from the F-Droid App Store with Graphene OS. To make things interesting and add some perspective, I also took photos using my 2020 iPad Pro. Before actually showing you these images, I wanna say I am not a photography expert, and my thoughts on these photos are coming from the point of view of someone who just understands cameras on a basic level. I can navigate a DSLR camera, and that's about it. I can't tell you much more about them. I do wanna add, in terms of testing, I did not touch any of the settings in these applications, with the exception of Open Camera, which I set to Open Camera API version two, which is what you should be doing if you're running this on Graphene OS. So our first comparison here is kind of just this messy tree, whatever you wanna call this. The Google camera, the colors look a little bit washed out, but overall it seems like it's very high quality. However, the colors do seem very weird. Uh, look at the top left, you're gonna see that the sky looks really blue, but if you look at the leaves, they don't look very green. Yet the bottom leaves look very green. So the color just seems very inconsistent. Open camera is definitely a little bit more consistent. Uh, you can see everything just looks very poppy. And overall, I actually prefer the open camera photo over the Google camera for this specific comparison. Now, I would say that the open camera here is a little bit overexposed. If you look at the actual tree trunk uh, at the bottom, it is almost completely white and completely overexposed. So that is one concern. All right, let's move on to the second comparison. So if we go to the Google camera, this actually looks really nice. And I feel like this really represented what it was like to be there because this was around 6 p.m. The sun was kind of starting to set and it was near golden hour. And I was in a place that was kind of shaded. And so you can actually see the contrast here between the darkness and the light. And it looks really nice. And you see all of the detail here on this umbrella. It, it just looks really nice. You can see that bird poop very nicely. Something else that looks really nice is look at how well the background is blurred and it really just brings the umbrella into focus. This is the only photo out of all three of them that actually accomplished this. If we go to open camera, we're gonna see here complete overexposure. And it's hard to express how overexposed this is. It's not just overexposed to the point where it looks bad on your monitor. If you're actually here in real life, this looks like it was in shot in bright daylight at 12 p.m. when really it was shot at 6 p.m. and there were shadows everywhere. Here though, everything looks overexposed. This next comparison gets really interesting. If we look at the Google camera, you're going to see it's just kind of meh. Um, one odd thing is the colors look a little bit odd. This looks a, a little bit more yellow green than what it actually looked like in real life. Whereas if you go to the open camera one, this looks almost like surreal, unnatural. Um, it's, it's just really interesting, but this I felt like actually got the colors the best, which kind of goes against the other comparisons. However, if you look in the back there at the sky, the sky looks like it's nighttime. So everything looks very saturated and the contrast is just off the roof in open camera. I will say that I think that the shot itself that I grabbed is much nicer with open camera. I just got a better shot. I got closer to the flowers and it just looks nicer. I feel like if I put the same attention into the Google camera, I probably would have got better results. All right, on to more confusion. The Google camera in this one that looks frankly pretty terrible. I, I just, I don't know what's going on here. It feels like nothing was kind of put into focus. Nothing really got any detail, but again, this is also partly an error on my end for not quite getting the best shot. I admittedly probably spent less time gathering these photos than I should have. 
you look at open camera, uh, same pattern here, everything looks overexposed. Um, it doesn't look bad, but it, it, I can't express to you how not light this actually looked in real life. This is nothing like what it actually looked in real life. So in terms of actually adding color and really popping, I'd say that open camera kind of nailed it here, but not exactly for good reasons. As you can see, these look like the colors from like a chowder episode or something. Let's go to our next comparison. The Google camera, in my opinion here, absolutely killed it. You're gonna see that this just, it just has so much quality. The colors look beautiful. Everything just looks accurate. And this is exactly what it looked like in real life. I, I just, I really don't have any complaints about this shot. It looks really nice. There's even a nice blur in the back. Just overall, I, I can't really say many bad things about this photo. If you go to open camera, it's also a pretty nice shot, but again, you have kind of that overexposure and the contrast is always a little bit off with open camera. Look at how everything kind of seems to have like a white filter over it almost, especially in the background. It was not that bright outside. I, I can't say this enough. It was not that bright, yet it looks like their sun is shining right on everything. This one, in my opinion, had the least amount of differences between all of the cameras. Honestly, they all did a pretty decent job. Um, even open camera was pretty accurate. However, again, with open camera, if you look to the left, in the background, you're gonna see that everything looks totally washed out and it just looks completely overexposed, as always. There seems to be a lot more quality that was picked up by the Google camera. It's just extremely sharp. You can actually see the leaves and you can see the ends of the leaves and how they correspond with the ground. It's just, there's a whole new level of depth in the Google camera. Now is when things get a little bit interesting. So this is actually a pretty low light environment. So this is kind of like a dim room. It wasn't dark, but it wasn't quite light, but it was a little bit darker than just a standard room. The Google camera makes this kind of just look like a normal room. So it looks overall decent and yeah, it looks pretty good. Open camera, it's just it's just really awkward. Um, if we look at the zipper here in the middle, it looks like you, you don't see the fineness of the zipper, whereas the Google one, you can actually see the zipper and you can almost zoom in and see the individual threads that make up the zipper. Whereas on open camera, it kind of just looks like a line. Again, everything kind of looks overexposed and washed out. Up next is a almost completely dark room. So this, I closed all the blinds. So there was a little bit of light that was coming in from the blinds, but that's about it. All the lights were turned off in the room and this was actually pretty dark. So let's start with the iPad Pro. Let's just say this is by far the worst. This just looks awful. If you go to the Google one, this in my opinion came out the best. Um, there's still a lot of noise since this is low light and it actually makes it look like there's quite a bit of light in the room, more light than I feel like there actually was. So that's impressive. And finally, open camera, I don't know what's actually worse. Open camera, the iPad. On one hand, the iPad, it just makes the room look completely dark and it's really hard to see any details. But open camera makes this look like a photo I took with like an Altec phone from the Verizon store from like 2010. I mean, you can almost see like the purple haze around the photo. Uh, yeah, this is just really bad. Up next was the same exact shot, but utilizing flash. So if we look at the Google one, this, in my opinion, just looks wonderful. Um, it, it looks gorgeous, actually. Um, the fact that we were able to get such a good shot from a phone really impresses me. And I mean, if we zoom in here on the zippers, the zippers are still, the detail on them is still completely fascinating just to, to observe. And it just looks like a well-lit room. You can kind of tell there was a flash used because of the reflection. And it's obviously a central flash, which is gonna be pretty hard to hide in these kind of photos. I feel like if the reflective aspects of this photo, so the mic stand on the right, as well as the box on the bottom, if those reflective elements weren't there, I don't think many people would be able to notice that this was taken with a flash on, which is extremely impressive. Open camera also didn't do a bad job. The only thing that I felt was kind of lacking is things kind of look washed out, but open camera still did really well. I do think that the iPad got the most accurate colors out of the three of them. I feel like the Google camera made this orange look almost pinkish. Open camera made the orange look twice as saturated than it actually is. Whereas the iPad, it seems like it got the colors the most accurate. And kind of a bonus, if you just saw this, I switched only the Google camera because Google offers their nightlight mode. This is the same exact photo in the same dark environment using nightlight instead of flash or no flash. 
This is by far the absolute best out of all of these. Nightlight is extremely impressive. It maintains the quality. It makes the colors look great. This is just impressive. This, this looks like something that was taken inside a bright room. I, I am just completely blown away by Nightlight. So that alone is almost a reason to try to get the Google camera app working on your phone because Nightlight is just impressive. Theoretically, the videos should come out pretty similar to the photos, so I didn't really see the need to test that. However, the one new thing that video brings to the table is stabilization. And I'll tell you, the stabilization from the Google app is significantly better than open camera. I mean, just look at these videos. It looks like I'm like shaking the phone with open camera when I tried to mimic the same exact motion on both. And you can see the Google camera is able to stabilize that pretty well. So is there a camera quality drop off? 100%, it's pretty undeniable. However, open camera on Graphene OS still gets pretty good photos. So I wouldn't necessarily tell people not to get this phone just because of the photos as there are actually some instances where open camera does better and beats the Google app, in my opinion. And I don't wanna to do too much of the thinking here because A, I'm not an expert, and B, I think that people make up their own minds from photos, and there might've been some photos that I felt looked better and people in the comments might disagree. So I'm not gonna to do too much of a conclusion on this. Um, that was the comparison and I kinda of gave my thoughts on it. Overall, I do think that the Google camera app wins but I'll let you all make your own decision. I wanna thank everyone who recommended this video, and also, if you really liked this video, it's much appreciated if you give it a like below and subscribe to our channel to catch our future content. We cover lots of privacy and security topics revolving around graphene, mobile devices, and just everything related to privacy and security on all fronts. I also wanna thank our patrons for making these kind of things possible. If you wanna support what we do, make sure to check out our Patreon. There's tons of different perks and tiers that we offer, so make sure to check that out. Thank you all again for watching, and have a lemuricious day.